So I think another thing to look at, and, and we can keep this totally ambiguous, because you and I both know, we all know, yeah. that there's a few brands that have been doing it very wrong. Uh, just in general, though, what would you say, and I think we kind of touched on this, you talked about leaves everywhere and, and green, Pantone, and, but what are the biggest mistakes that some of these brands, small and large, are making in the industry right now? Great question. I think without going into the rabbit hole of necessarily design, let's take a step back and look at process because I think understanding the process first and foremost will help reveal the obvious design faux pas, right? So when we approach uh, you know, any client, we start with the creative brief. The creative brief is where we go through a series of in-depth questions tailored to your business that help us better understand and solidify the creative direction moving forward. These very specific questions reveal information and insight that is paramount to uh, the process in terms of how you approach the creative. Yeah. So once we've had the ability to extrapolate that information, we then move into the brand directional mood boards. The brand directional mood boards is where we, well, I think the best way to put this is, let's look at Gillette razors and the Dollar Shave Club. Yeah. Gillette is <laughs> the best a man can get, right? Very yeah. masculine, bold, futuristic in their aesthetic approach is where the Dollar Shave Club is witty, comical, yeah. right? Funny. Yeah. And the amount of money they spent to put together their commercial is nominal in comparison to what Gillette has had to spend. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, the Dollar Shave Club was very successful. Why? Well, they took a risk. They differentiated themselves completely and so well, in fact, that... Uh, Gillette they, came back, right? They Well, so in fact that uh, um, the Dollar Shave Club uh, you know, grew to become the monster they are today. Yeah. yeah. While competing with Gillette. This behemoth. Right. Which Gillette, to your point, that's, I love that story. I'm going to geek out. But this is one thing I thought was pivotal, and this is when you know a disruptor has made an impact on an industry. So Gillette, there's a lot of companies that kind of monopolize certain niches in certain industries, right? Gillette had owned it for so long, and there was none of that personal. They never talked about their employee. Have you seen their latest campaign? I mean, they literally came out with a marketing campaign that targeted Dollar Shave Club and said, made in America, made by these hardworking individuals from this town. Like they literally pivoted their whole, we're the best, we're number one, we're the only, and by the way, we charge you eight bucks a blade. There was no like personal connection no, uh, for the, the consumer to the They the don't brand touch on the real parts of social responsibility. But yeah. my point of that was that had the Dollar Shave Club came out with a personality that was similar to Gillette, much like Braun, right? Yeah. Um, they would have created more competition for themselves prior to even starting. So they're failing before they start. Yeah. So when you see brands come to market, they're trying to emulate or echo another brand that they saw when in fact that's not the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You need to take a risk, calculated of course, but again, that's why people come to agencies to help provide those creative suggestions and solutions uh, and explorations with supporting rationales to show why you should do this. 